Hi, I'm Chief Johnson, Chief of Police of Midtown, USA. Our town has grown over the years, and with that growth, we have seen an increase in population. With the increase in population, we have also seen a rise in burglaries and other crimes. Our citizens, looking to provide a safer environment for their families and businesses, have turned to alarm systems. While alarm systems seem to help, they bring a problem of their own. False alarms. The first year we began to track the number of false alarms, we counted over 6,000 false alarms. After realizing the problem, we took steps to reduce false alarm dispatches, only to find the numbers had increased the following year. After some research, we found that simply counting false alarms is not a good way to measure them. We discovered something called the false alarm factor. Follow me over to our classroom and let me explain how this works. In the late 1990s, the alarm industry, in association with the International Chief of Police, worked together to try to reduce false alarms in several states. The results of the study were published in a report known as the Model States Report. From the Model States Report, we found there was a need for a uniform means of measuring false alarms and assessing the success of efforts to reduce them. This method is called the false alarm factor. To use this method, you first need to know how many monitored alarm systems are in your area, which is why our city now requires alarm systems to be registered. Once we had a count of monitored alarm systems, we began to track alarm dispatches, noting how many were actual burglaries or burglary attempts, and how many were false alarms. To calculate our false alarm factor, we simply divide the number of false alarm dispatches by the number of registered alarm systems. Shown here are the estimated numbers from our first year. As you can see, we had a false alarm factor of 0.6. Here are the numbers from the following year. As we had seen before, the number of false alarms increased. However, the number of registered alarm systems also increased and our false alarm factor decreased, revealing that we are making some progress in managing our false alarm problem. So you can see, before a false alarm reduction program is started, it is important to understand how to measure false alarms so your success can be gauged. I trust you now know how to calculate your false alarms and that you will continue to work towards lowering them and be a part of the alarm industry's false alarm reduction effort. Thank you for your time.